you ever have it where you forget to turn on your lights? Oh, fuck me. I'm such an idiot. Oh boy. I had way too much caffeine. Like, I feel like an animal right now. As if that makes any sense. Um, okay, so hi. I am a person, apparently. Maybe. Maybe. As you can probably tell, I'm very new to this. Um, so the last video I uploaded was talking about how I was gonna make my intro and um, kind of like showing my creative process and how I like capture my ideas. Like when I have an idea in my head, I'm just like, let me jot this down. And then I kind of just recorded a quick clip showing like, how I come up with ideas. Uh, but yeah, I tried. I tried to do it like the easy lazy way and make a cute little quirky intro and um yeah I'm just kind of crazy it's a different kind of daisy let's be lazy make you snort I won't be bored of Eleonora I'm trying to get used to being on camera and not looking like a total freak in the process yeah, so today I'm going to talk about um, something that's kind of been on my mind the past few weeks, I guess. So, I am a person. Jesus Christ, how do I even talk about this? My posture sucks so bad. I need to hurry up and put my chair together so that I can like have a backrest to lean against. <laughs> because naturally, I have a horrible posture, which has given me very bad back cur curvature. Anyway, so as you can probably see from the title of this video, I'm talking about how I experience transphobia even though I'm not trans. And you might be wondering, how does that happen? So I don't know exactly how people perceive me. Um, I might obviously and very clearly look like a woman, but sometimes I look rough. I have some health issues that cause me to have very bad hyperpigmentation and sometimes my face gets super sunken in. Yeah, I guess sometimes I look like a guy. And it's okay, it happens. Sometimes I'm in public and people will assume that I am a man, I guess. Editing Nora here. Obviously in this video, I guess I look pretty feminine, but I obviously tried to make sure that the lighting and angles for the camera were as good as possible. So in real life, I can look rough sometimes. It can be a bit disheartening and cause a lot of insecurity and be a blow to my self-esteem. But I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with people assuming that I'm transgender even though I'm not. Uh, what really bothers me is when people decide to treat me terribly for it. Personally, I support trans people. I am a supporter of LGBT. I am bisexual, so I am part of the LGBT community. I think that people should have the right to live life as they best see fit. And I fully support trans people living the life that they feel best fits them and being able to live as themselves and in a body that they feel comfortable with. But I myself am not transgender, I'm born biologically female, I identify fully as a woman, and sometimes I like to dress very feminine, like right now I'm wearing a skirt. I look very feminine now, but that's because I made great effort to perfect the angles and lighting, but sometimes I look terrible. Due to my health issues, I have very bad hyperpigmentation and I just look extremely rough and sometimes manly. Part of my health issues is hair loss, so I'm currently struggling with that. And so sometimes I'll be in public and I'll be going about my business and I'll hear people mumble under their breath after looking at me, that's a man. I remember once I was at work and I was walking and then somebody said she looks terrible and then their friend or something said, did you just call that a girl? So it's very disheartening to experience um, transphobia when I'm not trans and it just makes me realize the degree of hatred and harassment that actual trans people must experience on a daily basis. It is hard enough to deal with transphobia when you're not actually trans, but I can only imagine what actual trans people must experience because I don't want to compare my experience with people mistaking me for trans or mistaking me for a man. 
with people who are actually transgender. I don't feel like it's my right to kind of minimize their struggle. They probably experience a whole lot worse than me, so I'm not going to sit here and try to act like I have it worse or as bad as them. If anything, it makes me have more sympathy and compassion for trans people because already before this started happening, um, I still obviously supported trans people and I fully believe that they should have the right to live as they want and be respected for their identity. But being treated badly and differently and experiencing transphobia despite not even being trans has given me a whole bigger perspective on the daily struggles that it must be to just be trying to live your life as yourself and get hated for it. I get people who give me dirty looks, who look at me with disgust, who make comments to me. I had one person just look at me and say gross one day. I've had people question my gender all of the time. I have people who treat me terribly when I go to the store, employees are sometimes rude to me, my own doctor can sometimes be rude to me, and it's just hard having to experience this and have no say or control over any of it because I was just born this way. I can do a lot of things with my life. I can lose weight, I can dress nicely, I can take showers to smell fine, but I can't exactly control certain things about the way I look. And so for me to just be trying to live my life as a normal person and just go about my day to day and get treated terribly for it is very disheartening and can cause a lot of feelings of hopelessness. Luckily, I take solace in the fact that these people are just ignorant and that even if I was trans, I still deserve respect and basic human decency. And that's the thing that I think is most important to take away from this that even though I'm not trans and people treat me horribly because they think I am, I still deserve basic respect and human decency. Trans people deserve basic respect and human decency. I feel like everyone deserves basic respect and human decency, whether or not they're trans. Now, of course, if someone's being an asshole to you, you know, you don't have to continuously sit there and take it. But most people are just trying to go on that and live their lives. And I feel like I can relate to that on a very basic level. I'm just trying to go about living my life and get treated terribly for it. Trans people are just trying to go about and live their life and get treated terribly for it. So if trans people experience what is called gender dysphoria, where their gender identity does not match their birth sex. And that comes with feeling uncomfortable with certain parts of your body or your role in society. For instance, trans people are often uncomfortable with their sex-based characteristics and they'll go about getting surgery and stuff to change that to what they feel better matches their gender identity. That being said, while I feel fully comfortable and identify with my birth gender, and I feel very happy in embracing being a woman, it wasn't always that way. I actually used to struggle with my body and with my gender identity. Now that doesn't necessarily mean I was actually trans before, but I used to actually feel uncomfortable with being a woman. Until I discovered that, that didn't necessarily mean I was transgender. And it took me maybe a year or two before I was able to realize that I was actually just a tomboy. So when I was 19, I went through somewhat of an identity crisis. I had just moved out of my parents' house and I was living in the dorms on campus. And I was kind of just trying to discover who I am as a person and really become comfortable in my own skin. Kind of just trying to explore myself and discover who I am as an independent person and not who my parents wanted me to be since that was my first time living on my own. So for a little while I did wonder if I would feel more comfortable living as a man and that's something I kind of had considered since I was a teen and first undergoing puberty. There were a lot of changes. I was growing breasts. I was having my period and developing into a woman and so I kind of wondered if I would feel more comfortable living as a man and I think in part that was insecurity. When I was a teen, I was very fat, I was unhealthy, I was extremely depressed and isolated. There are a lot of things about myself that I didn't like. Genetically in my family, we women tend to have very broad shoulders. Because of years of slouching and also genetics, I have a very pronounced curvature on my back. 
women in my family tend to have very narrow hips and very flat butts. Come on! And wide jaws. And obviously with my health issues causing hyperpigmentation that sometimes looks like a beard or a mustache and causing my <laughs> hair to fall out. Yeah, it was hard to feel confident in myself as a woman. I used to think that I looked so terrible as a woman that I looked more like a man and maybe I should just transition to a man and I would feel more comfortable in my body. And it was really mostly about social pressure and feeling like I needed to do that in order to be socially accepted and fit in. And I think that like ties back into society and how women are pressured to only look a certain way. And I feel like that really needs to be emphasized and considered. Women in society are pressured so harshly to maintain a certain appearance. We have to always be feminine and youthful. That ugly women or women who are more androgynous looking are really not included in the media or public figures all that much. Most celebrities, even the ones who try to dress more tomboy, look very, very feminine. And I feel like this societal pressure for women to always look a certain way and to never fall outside of that very narrow box kind of has led to women being unable to actually feel comfortable and not falling within a certain scope of how a woman could look like. Because not all women look like hourglass figure, big butt, wide hips. Some of us look more androgynous and I look more androgynous. And especially now in these days, in this age where transphobia is on the rise for some reason, which is very saddening because I thought we were getting over transphobia and trans visibility was increasing and we were able to more accept trans people. A lot of women who are more androgynous looking or more masculine looking are now facing a lot of hatred and vitriol because we're getting mistaken as trans and now we're having to face what tra actual trans people face. And so it's kind of created this divide among women where women who look more androgynous, we feel like we can't be accepted with other women because people <laughs> mistake us for trans and give us hatred for it. And so now we're more able to actually better understand what trans people are experiencing and so we have more compassion and empathy for trans. But that's not always the case because some androgynous looking people, instead of having more empathy and compassion for trans people, end up turning against trans people and throwing trans people under the bus in order to protect themselves. They think, hey, I'm not trans. How dare you think I'm trans? I hate trans people. And they feel like that's going to gain them more acceptance among TERFs. And transphobes. I think the conclusion should not be that we need to hate trans people more obviously but that basic human empathy and kindness has a long way to go in our society and we're definitely not there yet. But anyway back to my teen years. Caffeine. So I questioned my identity for a few years and I thought that I needed to transition to a man in order to feel comfortable and happy with my own body. I became uncomfortable with my breast, I became uncomfortable with my genitals, and while I no longer struggle with the gender aspect of my body, I still experience body dysmorphia, which is separate from gender dysphoria. As I described earlier, gender dysphoria is what trans people experience, where their gender identity doesn't match their birth sex. Body dysmorphia, on the other hand, is where your perception of your own body may be drastically different from how your body actually is. Now this can take on many different forms. The main form is when people often think they are a lot larger than they really are. I struggle with feeling like I am very fat even though I might not be. Right now I'm at a very healthy weight but I still struggle with always feeling like I am too big and like I need to lose weight. For other people it might be certain aspects of their face like their nose um, plastic surgery addicts often have body dysmorphia. They might feel like they look very ugly or like they have a very large nose when their nose might be normal. So they'll constantly be on the hunt to fix their perceived flaws. And men can also experience body dysmorphia too. Oftentimes it takes the form of exercise and gym addicts who feel like they are too weak and small. So they feel like they have to constantly exercise in order to build up muscle and become large and manly. And you know, it can happen to anybody in any different form. And I feel like that still ties back into societal pressure on women to look a certain way. Whereas before, 
I experience problems with my womanly sex characteristics. Now I experience problems with my size. And I also struggle with liking my face. Obviously, with my health issues making me look more masculine, I always feel like I need to get surgery in order to fix myself. And I can't fix everything. Some things are just genetic and I'm just gonna have to live with them. So all of that really impacted my ability to feel comfortable with being a woman. And for a while, I did think I was transgender and that I needed to turn into a man. But I was able to realize over time that sometimes I just feel like a tomboy. Sometimes I just feel masculine and that's okay. I don't need to be put into a box of being feminine or masculine. And I feel like I really needed to accept that in order to truly be free to express myself as a person. I used to think if I wasn't fully feminine 100% of the time that that meant that I was a man. And I feel like that's important to be able to tell the difference between being transgender and lacking confidence. And the thing that made me realize that I wasn't transgender was when I had a dream that I actually had fully transitioned and it felt terrifying. It felt wrong. It felt like it was incorrect, like I was in the wrong body. And when I woke up, I actually felt relieved that in real life I never transitioned and that I was actually still in my own body. And I feel like it took that dream to realize I don't think I'm actually trans. As a society, we need to be able to allow women to fall outside the scope of the typical feminine figure. And I feel like that's why it's important to have representation of women of all kinds, to be able to fully embrace yourself as a woman. Sometimes I feel more girly and sometimes I feel more masculine and tomboyish and that's okay. It's great to embrace all sides of you and not exactly try to put a label on every single feeling we have as human beings. Part of being human is having a rainbow of experiences and trying to put ourselves into a box all the time, have a restricted definition of what it means to be human is going to lead to a lot of bigotry in society. So when I finally came to the conclusion that just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I have to be feminine and girly, I had a revolution. I cut my hair and started dressing in, as my tomboy self. And that was a very good time. I felt more confident than ever during that period of time. And I felt free, honestly. Like, I felt like I could finally just fully be myself. The ironic part about it all is now that I went through that phase and it's over, right now I feel very feminine. I still have moments of time where I feel more tomboyish. But right now I actually feel extremely feminine and I think that it's important for women and girls to be able to know that just because you feel masculine or tomboyish doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you and that doesn't mean that you're not a woman either. And similarly, trans people deserve basic human decency and respect. They're just trying to live their lives too. Now, being a woman isn't exactly um, all rainbows and unicorns. You have to deal with a lot of bullshit, not just from society, but from our own bodies. Like having to deal with periods, hormonal issues and imbalances and things we have no control over. Roe vs. Wade was recently struck down and now we have to worry about our bodies growing babies against our will and us not being able to do anything to stop it. As women, we're expected to look feminine all the time, we're expected to shave, have no body hair, act very meek and polite and quiet, wear makeup, have nice, beautiful, luxurious hair, smell nice all the time, dress in a very uncomfortable way, and it's very restricting and it's very disheartening, and for some women, they feel so uncomfortable and disheartened about that that they believe that they should transition to a man because they feel like they could be more free to express themselves or feel more comfortable in just being themselves and not having to adhere to these social rules and these social expectations if they were a man. And we should be able to allow people to express themselves and to dress the way they want and present themselves as they want. Men should be able to wear dresses and skirts if they want to and not be treated terribly for it. Women should be able to look like tomboys or have androgynous bodies or faces and not feel horrible about it. And for people who experience gender dysphoria, they should be allowed to transition into a body they feel comfortable with and not be treated like the scum of the earth just for living their lives. So this video is already long enough and I think I should probably end it here. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm still not used to being on camera. Probably very stiff in this video. My voice is very cool.
quiet so I need to get used to projecting my voice more. So thank you for watching and hopefully I can catch you on the next video.